So in this section 4.3, which is called Establishing Causation, we're going to kind of think about the question um, around the issue of association does not imply causation. So what I've done here is I've drawn a diagram where let x and y be some variable. In this case, x is the explanatory variable, y is the response variable. And this dashed line up here means that there is some association or some correlation, let's just say association, between X and Y. Um, for example, X might be the amount of sugar you eat in a year, Y might be the number of cavities you get. The solid arrow really represents causes or causation. So this arrow means causation, this one means um, association. So I think we would all agree that in some cases, well actually in every case, there is an association between the number of amount of sugar you eat, and the number of cavities you have. And in this case, it is appropriate to, put, to draw the diagram like this because that association is caused by a change in X and a change in Y. In other words, eating candy causes you to have cavities. So even though we say that association does not imply causation, sometimes that's the right answer. Sometimes the reason for an association is, in fact, causation. And we can think of lots of examples. If X was, you know, the amount of alcohol you consume and Y is your blood alcohol content, well, yes, there's an association between alcohol and your blood alcohol content and that's caused by drinking alcohol, right? Um, you can kind of think of more, you know, other examples. If X was the amount of pesticide you spray into the soil and Y was the number of bugs, well, yes, there's an association between a number of pesticides and bugs. In that case, it's a negative association. And the reduction in bugs is, in fact, caused by pesticides. However, we're going to be really careful because it's not always the case that this is the correct diagram. We're going to look at two other examples where association is present, but the answer is not causation. So let's look at those other two diagrams. So here's our next diagram. This is something called common response. It's a little tough to read there, but it says common response. So I'm using the same convention. The dashed arrow, the dashed arrow means association. This means association. And the solid arrows here mean, oh, my writing's getting bad, means causation. And this one does too. So in here, what's your, and Z, in this case, I had a third variable. Z is what we would call a lurking variable. And this is actually an example we've seen before, where here there is an association between X and Y, but that association is not caused by X causing it in Y. It's because there is some lurking variable Z that simultaneously causes the change in Y and the change in X. The best example is the example I gave in class with the firefighters. If X was the number of firemen, and why was the monetary damage of the fire? Well, sure enough, there is an association between X, the number of firemen you send to a fire, and Y, the amount of damage in the fire. But no one would ever say that that association is, because, is causation. No one in the right mind would ever draw an arrow between X and Y representing cause. What's going on there? Well, there's a third lurking variable, Z, which is the size of the fire. The size of the fire causes a change in X and causes a change in Y. Okay? That's the idea of common response. You would say that the association is due to a common response in the lurking variable size. Let's write that down. The association, oh my gosh, my handwriting is terrible. The association is due to a common response to the lurking variable size. Okay, my example. I think I give another example in class. The idea of if y was the amount of the uh, number of um, churches. Oh my gosh, my handwriting is just disastrous. Churches. If y was the amount of vodka consumed. Hey, guess what? There is an association here. Okay? But if you let Z be the population, that's really the reason going on because no one in the right mind would say that churches causes people to drink vodka. No, it would be that the population causes more churches and the population causes more vodka.
Okay, this is one of two pictures. Let's talk about the third picture. So the third picture is something we call a confounded situation. Um, or so, sometimes we call the lurking variable, in this case, a confounding variable. So let's get into an example. Okay, let's have x be the amount of education you have, number of years you've been in school, and let's have y be your salary. Okay, I think we would all agree that there is, it's, there is an association between the number of years you've been in school and your salary. In general, people who have been in school more uh, tend to have a bigger salary. And the question is, is it proper to say, is it reasonable to basically draw this arrow and say that more education causes an increase in salary? Seems plausible. I'm not saying it's not. However, are there lurking variables going on there? And the answer, I think we would say, is yes, right? For example, you know, your parents' parents' salary okay, might actually cause you to also have an increase in salary. There are, you can think of there's many lurking variables. And so what you would say here is, is it reasonable to say that education causes an increase in salary? Probably we would say no because there are confounding lurking variables. Okay? Um, to kind of a good, you know, that's, that's a good example. We can probably think of a lot more. For example, think about this question. Let X be uh, whether or not you are a vegetarian. Something, something about like the healthiness of your diet. In other words, we can think about it that way. The amount of meat you eat or something like that. And let Y be your lifespan. Right? Okay? Well, is it reasonable to think, it does, is, there, is, would a, is it plausible to basically say that your diet in some way causes you to have a longer lifespan? Is it reasonable to draw that orange arrow? I would say yes. However, are there lurking variables, right? And I would say yes, there are. Like your overall attitude towards health, right? Um, you know, in general, it might cause you to, people who are, have a healthy diet also tend to exercise more, right? They tend to take care of themselves better. They tend to be wealthier, to be honest, because they kind of, then they think about health differently. And that might actually simultaneously cause a change in lifespan. So you're not really sure whether the change in lifespan is due to the actual diet or due to the confounding variable, okay? And how much you actually write that, you might say that, um, um, the okay, the uh, causation. Not bad. No, let's not say that. Let's say that just uh, diet is confounded, confounded, confounded. Oh my gosh, I'm not even making any sense. Confounded with the lurking variable attitude about health. And there's lots of situations where there are confounding lurking variables. Um, and we have to, we'll talk about situations like this a little bit more in class. And just the last thing in this section, because it's a pretty short section, is, well, how do you prove causation? How do you prove causation? If there's these three pictures going on, how do you possibly know which one is the correct one, right? You want to do an experiment. Does this medicine cause people to get better? How can we possibly say cause, right? Why, how do we know it's not common response or uh, confounding? And the real answer here is you conduct an experiment. Okay, and an experiment is something we will talk a lot about in the next chapter, chapter 5. We'll talk about how do you actually set up an experiment to be sure that the reason for the causation, the reason for the association is causation rather than common response or confounding lurking variables. And trust me, we'll talk a lot in chapter 5 about how to actually conduct this experiment correctly. And that's it.